If you look at these videos that emerged on social media in the last 48 hours, you realize the frailty of life. A poor man who went out to fend for his family. So sad. The videos from earlier asserted that he was still alive. And those that emerged more recently suggested that he was not. Only this time there was a body in a bag with his face visible to back it up. So our condolences go to his family. This draws us to an important issue of safety and begs the question, where does the liability of safety lie? This is Discourse. My name is Azubike. We have federal government institutions, NIMASA and NIWA, charged with certain standards to regulate the maritime sector and ensure the safety of our inland waterways, set out basic safety protocols and ensure that people comply with those measures. But often, they are too far away from the waterways they should be regulating. We have state governments who usually launch investigations in the wake of such unfortunate events and spend much more money on the investigations than they would have spent if they chose to donate basic safety equipment to operators in their inland waterways. We have local governments who often have direct contact with the boat operators in the maritime areas who have a duty to ensure safety either by enforcement or by voluntary support. If the local government decided to donate life jackets to all the boat operators who ply their waterways, wouldn't that have been a form of empowerment? So even if we presume that local governments was not directly responsible for maritime safety, certainly there was something they could have done. The operators of those jetties where the boats take off and land would have also ensured basic safety measures were put in place to ensure safety of their passengers and boat operators. There's also something they could have done, like stopping unsafe boats from plying their waterways, simply obeying the law. But then you ask, how many boat operators do they even have? Can they afford to ask any not to operate? Would it not impact negatively on their people? Next is the boat owner who should have provided the needed safety equipment for his or her boat operator and passengers. But what about the movie producer who allowed a crew to travel across the river without even the most basic safety equipment? Can such one be said to have value for the lives of those individuals? If the movie producer was there in person, would she have traveled in that boat without a life jacket? I suppose your guess is as good as mine. The liability for safety is an intricate issue where everybody seems responsible, but nobody assumes responsibility. That is why you'll always be taught that safety begins with you. You are ultimately responsible for your personal safety. If the passengers who boarded that boat and who since this mishap have continued to board boats all over the river sides in the country thought for one minute to use a life jacket this would have been a completely different story the truth here is that no one is more responsible for your personal safety than yourself nimasa talks about shared responsibility and they said while nimasa and niwa play critical roles water safety is everyone's business and that's why it seems like it's no one's business. Passenger boat operators are responsible for providing life jackets to passengers. Passengers themselves have the right to insist on wearing life jackets before boarding a boat. Even if any government or individual donated life jackets to serve all boat passengers, those passengers have a duty to wear them in the correct manner. Unless you take precautions that lie with you personally, 
you can hardly place liability or blame on anyone else. To the government at the federal, state and local levels, the boat owners and operators, the passengers themselves, we need to become proactive about safety. Life jackets are not for only those who can't swim or those who are afraid of the water. They are for everyone traveling on the water, especially in small boats. Let me not talk about the issues with the loading of the boat and concerns that may arise from that. The bottom line is that there were too many compromises made and as a result, a shining star is no more. This is a sad time. But if you step into the next boat without at least wearing a life jacket, especially when you can afford one, or when you have enough influence to insist that one is provided for you, then there might be many more to go. The fact is that personal safety places a duty on each of us, and that's where the real liability lies. Rest in peace, Junior Pope.